Hey guys, Brian here with Team Mana Beast, doing a little updated deck profile on my Angel Feathers because there's been a lot of updated stuff in set 13 that I wanted to talk about here. So if you've seen my previous video, we'll cover some of the same stuff, but we'll also go over some of the new stuff. So um, bear with me here. So the new starter we're going to go with is... No, no no new starter. We're still going with Hope Child Turtle because the card is too OP. Um, I know there's a new card that came out in 13, which is essentially, for those of you who don't know, it's an early break ride. Uh, it is a self damage before the ride phase, so before the ride phase, counter blast one, put the top card of your deck into the damage zone, and then you can ride or break ride early if you want to. So, I, I and I think it's a cool card. It's a really great card. I actually experimented with it with a bit, and while I think it's cool, I still think Hope Child Cheryl gives me much more flexibility um, for a couple reasons. Uh, Hope Child Cheryl's ability, if you don't know, is counter blast one, put this into soul. Take one card from your hand, put it in a damage zone, and take one card from your damage zone and put it in your hand. A couple things make this great. This does not state that it has to be face up. You can take the card that you just counterblasted, put it into your hand, and then put one card into your damage zone face up. This also allows me to fish out non-celestials if I'm having non-celestials in my damage zone. Allows me to fish out if I'm great stuck. If there's a one, two, or three in my damage zone, I can fish that out as well. So to me, the reliability and flexibility of this card is more my style rather than some of the explosive plays that you can get with Peniel or the new card that is the early break ride. So I still like this card. I still think it's better. So I personally run it. I think it's awesome. Now let's go ahead and go into grade threes. Um, we are going to run one, two, three, four of the Prophecy Celestial Ramiel. Of course, she's the break ride for Angel Feathers. When another Angel Feather rides this unit, effect a little break four, it gets plus 10k, and you get to take one card from your damage zone, put it in your hand, put one card from your deck into your damage zone. So again, allows more damage manipulation, allows you to get stuff out of your damage zone, and to play around with all that, which is all fine and dandy. Her other effect, of course, at any time when she attacks a Vanguard, she gets plus 2k, so she's a 13k attacker, hits cross rides all by her lonesome. And then our other grade three, Brand new, from set 13, the one, the, no, I'm, pff, what, what, no, I'm not running Ramiel Reverse, I mean, I know a lot of people talk about Ramiel Reverse, and I'm like, oh, she's so good, like, I mean, it's cross right, it's cool, but, I, personally, I love Zeracula more, to me, it's a better card, um, it gives me my lanes of power better, uh, because her effect, if you don't know, is Limit Rake 4, if I have a copy of her in the damage zone, which we'll talk about cards that can do that later, I get plus 3k to each of my units with Celestial in their name. That counts the Vanguard. So what this does is, in a very simple terms, it gives you 6k in each of your columns. 6k on your left rear guard column, 6k on your right rear guard column, and of course 6k on your center Vanguard column. A total power boost of 18k. I mean, if you think about that, that is like a total of another row hitting a cross ride plus a trigger. 18k. It's absolutely amazing. That's why I love her. I still think she's the best celestial boss monster, even above Ram Universe, in my personal opinion. The other thing, E special counterblast two celestials, and she gets plus 5k. So again, if we're talking about all this nice power, you do the counterblast two when you're in little rig four, she's a 19k attacker by herself with no boosters. So again, we're already hitting over cross rides plus 5k. She hits for really stupid good numbers. Still amazing card, and that's why a runner. All right, so let's get on to grade twos, and we will get to some of the changes I was talking about. So, of course, we're going to start with our standard three of the 12K attackers. Not four, but three 12K attackers, and I'll go into a little bit of that later. Her property, of course, special. If you got a Celestial on the Vanguard, she is a 12K hitter, 9K base. Really good. Good stuff, basics. Um, we're going to go back to our four Candle, Celestial, Sariel. Uh, I still run her for. I think, again, this is one of the clutch cards in the deck. You really need it. Her ability is Counter Blast 1, Angel Feather card. Again, very specific. Doesn't have to be Celestial. It's just Angel Feather. Search your deck for any card with an Angel Feather. Put it into your damage zone, face up. And then take one face up from your damage zone and put it into your drop zone. Essentially, she allows you to set up plays with Zerakka, like we talked about, which is standard Angel Feather stuff. But again, she lets me clean up my damage zone of non-celestial uh, units. So 
Since this isn't specialized towards Celestials, I can clean up my damage zone and take out those non-Celestials and put them in the drop zone. Very specific and uh, sometimes clutch card in those kind of situations. Now, let's talk about the new hotness. The new hotness of the new Grade 2s, which to me, I think is one of the best additions that the Angel Feathers have in, uh, in this entire uh, set 13. The new boss monster is one, two, three, four, Emergency Celestial Danielle. This card, absolutely amazing, has completely changed the way this deck plays. Her ability is Counter Blast 1, other card, another card with Celestial in its name. When a card is put into your damage zone, this is from when you take damage, this is from when you manipulate your damage, when a card goes into the damage zone, very key. Counterblast another card with Celestial in its card name. Special, summon this card from your damage zone and Superior call it to the field, to the rear guard. So what this card does is it allows you to get free cards out of your damage zone. And after you pull this out, you take the top card of your deck and put it into your damage zone. So this, to me, free unit that's 9k, uh, and then, of course, once we get this Zeracle thing going, it's a 12k hitter. After we get all the Limit Break 4 niceness going on there, this card is just simply amazing. Free units, free draw, which is something the deck, I think, has been missing because it doesn't have as much draw power. So cool, free draw. Woo, I get a free unit. Yay. Amazing card. Absolutely clutch to have in the deck. All right, so let's move on to Grade 1s. Let's just go for Celestial Perfect Guards because... We're, we're good, right? We're not bad. We're not going to run three. No. We're not, we're not going to run two. Why would... No. We're going to run four. Eh, four. Because it's so good. So good. And then the other card I still love, even to this day, is our Underlay Celestial Hedesial. I still can never pronounce that card right. Um, this card, 6k attacker. When we have Zeracula in the damage zone, pre-Limit Break. Doesn't even have to be Limit Break. She is a 9k booster. So, hey, guess what? Behind her 12k attacker, it's a 21k row before Limit Break. 9 plus 12, 21. Woo! And then, of course, once we get our lovely ability going with Zeracula at Limit Break 4, she's a 12k booster or 12k attacker. So, eh, 24k rows. Uh, pretty hot. Pretty hot. The other great ones we run are two Nursing Celestial, or Marking, not Nursing. She's not Nursing, she's Marking. Marking Celestial. Uh, yeah, you, you, you say it. I don't know how to say it. Only two of them. I did run more, but I'm running two now, and you wonder, well, what am I running in its place? Well, that's a very good question. I'm now running the new grade one from set 13. This is Nursing Celestial Naria. See, I got, I got the nursing. I was, I was already thinking of her, because she's just so wonderful. Uh, she's the new grade one. For those of you who remember Angel Feathers back in the day, Battle Cupid No Seal, um, both the, the grade one and the grade two were the hotness because they allowed you to swap damage. Of course, this was during the guard phase, the grade one guard phase when you put it on the guard circle, the grade two when it intercepted. Now, this is a huge game changer for Celestials for two reasons. Number one, it's a Celestial. Number two, it's a 7K instead of a 6K, which in this meta makes a big difference in numbers. Her ability is when she's placed on the field, you can take one card with Celestial in its name, from your damage zone, put it into your hand, and put one card from your hand and put it into the damage zone. Now this works on a couple different levels here. Number one, this goes really well with Sariel, because again, we're talking about damage manipulation, getting things out of our damage zone. This allows us to do even more with perfect guards, with anything we want out of there. And then number two, remember this card, Danielle, it's anytime something goes into the damage zone. So the great plays are when you play something like this on rear guard, and then you swap something out, then once you swap that item out, if she's in the damage zone, counterblast another card of Celestial, call this out, top card of your deck in your damage zone. And right there, you have a 16k row for pretty much the cost of dropping this card down. You get another free unit, which really helps with that. So that's why this card adds flexibility, uh, and it doesn't have to be a face-up card. It just has to be a card in the damage zone with Celestial. So... Damage unflipper, uh, yeah. Essentially, you just get those out of there, unflip them, put ones that are flipped, and it really, really helps to manipulate and do what angel feathers do, which is mess with the damage zone. So, awesome. 
for those because they're too good. Uh, moving on to triggers. Hey, what do you know? It's four hills because it's almost like they're so good because they're limited to four. Woo, four hills. Yeah, you should run them. They're good. Um, we are now running only four draw because of a card like Danielle. Because Danielle is like a free draw. If I can get Danielle off twice in a game, which is stupid easy, I've got six draw on the deck. So there's no need to have the other draws in the deck. Um, we can now focus on what I think are most important, which are one, two, three, four of the Celestial Crits. And then because, well, we don't have uh, any other Celestial Crits for non-Celestial Crits, um, but they are the Critical Hit Angel, put in a soul, give a Antra Feather unit plus 3k. Now, going back to what we talked about, any damage manipulation, um, whether it's from our Camel Sariel, whether it's any card we have, I like to manipulate and get these out of my damage zone. Because if I can get these into my hand, it's a 10k shield, or it's a 3k boost, and it also frees up my damage zone from non-celestials. So it's really, really amazing. And uh, that's, that's the big update. Uh, as far as performance-wise, I feel it's done really well. It does what Angel Feathers have done, but even better. And it works with the archetype really well. And especially with the Zeracchio build, I think it's amazing. And uh, my record's been really good with it. I mean, I've had, uh, just performance-wise, I'd say I've won about 80% of my games. Um, you know, some games I have a get grade lock, but it's still really good. And uh, again, Whole Child Turial just really works well with the deck and uh, still gives me all the plays I want. So anyway, there's the BT13 Celestial, see, I'm messing up. BT13 Celestials update. Of course, comment, rate, subscribe, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.